fam. Yes, sir. Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Talk podcast. Another day, another dollar. What's that like? And today is a special ep because I've got my first celebrity interview. Not a celebrity. <laughs> He's so silly. <laughs> high key, bro. Really? To me, you're a celeb, dog. Really? Yeah, high key. Guys, you know what's crazy high about key. him saying that to him, I'm a celeb, is that we grew up together. So I don't understand where this comes from. Now, nah, boy, you, you, you leveled up. Mm. You leveled up. Sorry, mm. it's not But me. I could say the same for you. Ah. You know, Mr. Uh. Top 10, Mr. South Africa. Mr. No. South Africa. No, no, no. Presenter. No, no. Not like that. Radio guy. Unblushing. The voice. <laughs> he said... <Stop> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, we're trying. Um... But of course, today's episode um, is going to be interesting because there's so Isn't much I want to unpack with you. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's a conversation. Yeah. Feed at home. You know what I'm saying? Don't be shy. I'm trying. No, yeah, I'm really trying, guys. I'm so shy. <laughs> so we're going to do an icebreaker. Okay. Right? Yes. Perfect. I so, love an icebreaker. Uh, it's just three questions. Okay. And then we're going to go into something else. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Now, the first question, <laughs> it's not that deep. Okay. It's not that deep. <laughs> it's fine, I got it. First question is, what is your favorite meal? Oh, my favorite meal? Like, what kind of meal? Anything. Like, okay, it depends. Yeah. I really am the most pedantic person in the world. So you can ask me, what is not your favorite meal? And I probably will have an answer for you. But when people ask me, what's your favorite? I don't have an answer. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. But I think my favorite meal would have to be between... Anything seafood, so sushi or prawns, and yeah, sushi or prawns actually, yeah, mm. but not prawn sushi. Okay. Yeah, the sushi must be salmon, and the prawns must be prawns. Yeah, yeah. Period. Okay, I hear that. I hear that. And then, what is the color of your toothbrush? My toothbrush. Oh, I have two toothbrushes. I have a yellow one and a blue one. One at my mom's house and one at my dad's house. So real. <laughs> that is so real. And how often do you change them? Uh, you know, when it's time. <laughs> When it's time. But what is time? What is time? When the toothbrushes, I'm enough. And I'm like, okay, okay, you know what? Oh, when my mom buys new toothbrushes, because usually that's when I'm excited to like swap out for a new color. Okay, I hear that. I yeah. hear that. I'll let that one slide. And then lastly, why are you here? <laughs> why am I here? Because mm. Bokan called me. Like, why else wouldn't I come? If Bokan calls, you must answer. Um, Period. Why so are you guessing me up today? That's why I'm here. Like, damn, I'm blushing. <laughs> Jeez, Kabbalah's not going to like this. Oh, oh. scary, <laughs> scary. So, of course, now, what I like to do now... Um, Kabbalah's my boyfriend, by the way, guys. He's so oh, yeah. fine. For those of you who don't know... He's so fine, and he's so smart, and he's so funny, and he's just so great. And I'm speak- so sorry to everyone who's not dating him, which is literally everyone you else. You know where he just said that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out, Kabbalah, for real. Mm. So, I like to do this thing called Poem of the Week. Okay. Right? Um, I told you see what I'm saying, guys. How can somebody who's as multi talented as Bokang dare step in the room and say, Oh my god, no, 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 don't do that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, I'm gonna read a poem, but what now okay. you need to do is you need to pick, pick a poem or a number actually between one and ten, okay? And then I'm gonna read that poem. So, pick three, three, yeah, yo, yo, okay. Why did you say you're like that? I mean, I was thinking seven, but you know, yeah, three. three. I said three. I said it with my chest. Okay. Do it. Let's do it. It's called How to Love Again. How? I sat there with paper and pen, hoping not to write a poem about you, hmm? but that's hard when you are all I think about. Hmm? We've been at it for a while. So, who's pen. poem? Who's <laughs> <Relax. laughs> <laughs> I All want right. the tea after the podcast. Let me continue. We've been at it for a while, mm. serving banter as though we are playing tennis. Mm. I make use of this reference because no other sport speaks of love the way tennis does. Mm. I honestly, I am honestly scared to play more sets just in case my feelings for you set. Mm. If I am not careful, time will pass and on us the sun will set. I do hope you as my pick is not the wrong bet for I am scared due to hearts that were in these hands have been scared. Mm. And hands my heart have been in were used to bruise. Thank God I didn't bleed. I plead. Please do not leave. If this was how things were meant to be, I would like to challenge that creed. For with confidence, I would have wanted to lead. Listen, I hope in the noise of my head, I will hear you. And in the mess of my heart, I will find you. For all I want is to love you, although it may be hard to. But because together we will move with pure hearts to render in the midst of our groove, 
like the Dominic Sherrell song, You'll Teach Me How to Love Again. Ooh. Damn. Yo. Yo. I wrote that. That's crazy. That's so deep. That's crazy. Who hurt you? Nah. <laughs> so it's, not, it's not even like that. It's not mm. even like that, you know? Mm. It's just that what I realized with this love thing, yeah? It's not easy. Yeah, you know? And the other gender likes to, ah. you know? No. They like to play. They like to play the game. That's not true. In this That's day and age. We're just fuck. girls. <laughs> We're really just girls. Yo. But like, I think that's what I realized. And I can't play the game, bro. Real. I'm, like, I'm struggling. Real. I'm just like, bro, I like you. Like, let's do something about that. Real. But, but I play along until I can't. <laughs> but um, anyways, that's poem of the week. Is that poem of the week? That's poem of the week. That's so deep. But I feel like that poem is truth. Really? Yeah, I think oh, it should be yeah. added to the Bible. It's giving oh! Psalms. <laughs> Song of giving. songs, hey. It's really giving. It's really giving, honestly. I think when... Okay, I'm going to talk about my boyfriend again because it's my favorite thing. I'm so dead, yeah? <laughs> but when I started dating him, that poem literally was probably the dialogue that we had with one another where it was like, let's put aside all the drama. If I yeah. like you, I like you mm. and I'm going to show it and Thank I don't you. expect this to be an unsafe space yeah. to show my love. So... Now we're here, which is great. So well. Yeah. My yeah. numbers are zero seven. <laughs> <laughs> if you want it, you will try. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Please, joking. Like, like, excuse me, in Doug. I will excuse you. I know the whole Miss South Africa top thirty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. That's what you're saying. I got you. <laughs> now we're gonna get into the chats, yeah. Okay. So the first question I have for you, just like. Um, it sounded really deep. Guys, bro. disclaimer, I'm not really good at answering questions. Uh, yeah. No, but I it's like, not that deep, right? Okay. But it's more like, I want to start like with your upbringing, right? And mm. I want to know what is like one lesson for you that like throughout or when you started growing up that stood out for you when you were young, growing up, you know, trying to figure out this life thing. Like what was that one lesson for you that you're like, oh, it actually, Yo. yeah. As a kid, like. Yeah, Dur as a, as during a as I was going baby. through it, yeah, in hindsight. I think. Well, I mean, in hindsight, I don't really know because in hindsight, I just have like wisdom and stuff that I've grown through and evolved through. But when I think about my state of mind as I was going through everything I was going through in high school and primary school, yeah. the biggest thing that I had learned was that not everybody is your friend and not everybody wants to see you win. Wow. And I think I learned very early on that you need to have a clear line of differentiation between an acquaintance and somebody who actually is your friend because sometimes you sit in class with people and just because you've known them for 12 years you think that they're going to be loyal to you in your time of need and that isn't always the case so okay yeah and in the same breath you don't what? have to call everyone your friend that's actually so real yes yeah but like it's, it's actually a chat i was having with one of my mates and we're speaking about how um we need to know but I think it's also it has to be communicated. But we need to know where we stand in people's lives. Don't you know? overestimate your position yeah. in people's lives. But also don't underestimate it as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But again, it comes with... But my underestimation yeah. is because of your lack of Communic validation and Correct. communication. Okay. So if I underestimate my place in your life, it's because you haven't made me to feel. Your actions haven't shown me that you value me at that level. Damn, that's so true. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, but like, do you would you say you have like a huge friendship circle? Or, Me? Yeah. No. Really? Mm -mm. I, I don't think that's I contrary to popular belief. Contrary to yeah. popular <laughs> belief, and I think this is also something that I had to learn growing up. Is yeah. I am very good at making everyone feel like they're my best friend, yeah, and yeah. so because of that, I've had multiple, you know, dramas, mini dramas everywhere because everybody overestimates their place in my life and that's just because of the actions that obviously I was giving off during yeah, yeah. that time. So as I grew older and like I'm saying to you, I had to learn the hard way to differentiate between people that I can call my friends and people that are just around me for convenience. Yeah. And so as a result, my friendship circle is very small. Like I literally am so happy because I, I have bridesmaids. Like I have enough for a bridal party. That's crazy. Yeah. Well that's dope though. Yeah. Deep. So would you say like how 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 big is your your close like your close circle like these are the people that I know if mawaza happens these are the people I'm going to It's just five girls I think Wow Yeah it's not a lot It's like three from well two from my childhood Okay and the other three I met in adulthood That's dope but Those are like 
five people that I know, like if I was in a, I don't know what, like somebody was holding a gun to my head and I need to give 5,000 rand, like I could call those five people. Okay, that's so dope. Yeah. Friendship is such a huge thing. It's massive. Because you know, I struggled making friends like my whole life. And I think the time I made a decision to be like, yo, I really need a group, group of friends was in high school, grade 10, where I changed high schools. And I was like, hey, God, like... I need friends. Yeah, like genuinely. But for you know a talkative public guy like you. Me? Yes. Bags. No ways. Yes. Talk Every time I've me. seen you, you're smiling and laughing with people. Nah, Every nah, single nah, time. Nah, nah. Don't get it twisted, oh. bro. Like, it's just one of those things where like, if we're chopping chats, nah, like, I'm, I just like chopping chats. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But like, it's not like we're made, you know? Mm. <laughs> like, I'm just, we just chop chats, mm. you know? <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I'm <laughs> listening to him say all of this, right? and then he still has the audacity to say the other gender is the problem. And it sounds like somebody <laughs> probably walks around leading girls on. Yo, that's a story for another day. Yo, don't even say that. I'm sure people are watching and they're like, like actually, exactly, yeah. exactly. I got a story. Mm -mm, the confessions are going to come soon. Anyway. Just watch the comments under this video. Yeah, I'm going to cry. But anyway, <laughs> but like, I think that was the biggest thing, like grade 10. And yeah. that changed my life when I made the decision to actually make friends and build that relationship. And thankfully, I did find a solid group of mates that were like there for me because okay. high school was just not a good time. And are they all like one squad? Like all your friends are friends with each other or Yeah, yeah, it's one clique. Okay. But I mean I do have like an odd two, three people outside of the clique where I'm still like, yo. This is my boy. I can hold them down, you know. But generally, like when I'm saying I'm going out with, with my mate, it's it's that group of people. And how many yeah. are they? It's five. Oh. It's no, it's five. Five um, is the good number, yeah. guys. So it's two guys, three girls. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There are even girls in there. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's some powerful stuff. But, I mean, they have boundaries. There's I no female bestie. Mm. Please! No, we don't do that. Not mm. here, not okay. here. Okay, if rebuke, you say so. We rebuke I that. I hope you say that, but <laughs> believe you. And then obviously, what, how would you describe your childhood in one word and why? Um, building. Formative. Maybe formative is the better word to use. Okay. So is formative the right English? I don't know. I'm the formative. Wrong guy. Guys, please help me in the comments. I'm not English, by the way. Like, this is my fourth language. Yeah. So I definitely think b building sure. formative, that's the word that I would use. Why? Why for my building childhood. and formative? Because, okay, this might sound very arrogant depending on who you are and, you know, where your mind is right now. Yeah. But. Looking at the path that I'm on right now and kind of the trajectory that my life is taking me on, I think all the bullying and oppression, for lack of a better term, that I experienced in my childhood. And just to give you context, I think in primary school, yes, it was the usual like, oh, you're dark skin, you're skinny, wah, 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 <laughs> and they bully you like every skinny, dark skin person, even not skinny, dark skin people, like any dark skin person has the same story to say. I was bullied as a child. Mm. Everyone said the way you so black when the like, lights are off. Joke, yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like the same joke goes everywhere. So that was pretty standard, I guess. Hopefully it won't be so for our children. Amen. <laughs> um, but then moving on into my high school career, I wasn't fighting with children anymore. My fight was with adults. So I was being bullied by parents and staff members. And that was... Um. Yeah, it, it was it was a lot because you're a child, you know? There's mm. not much that I can do. So how do I navigate a situation where I'm living my life just being me, achieving the things that I am in academics and whatever, and I have a parent call me on my phone after school and start swearing at me in Afrikaans, just like telling me off. Crazy. So like situations like that, or like I'd be at school and teachers, there, there was one teacher who every time I'd go to her class, before I even step in, she'd be like, eight, my class eight, moahi. Like, okay, cool. That's to some crazy. point, like I just stopped going to her class completely. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go hang out with Miss What What <laughs> and just stay in her class. So yeah. I had a lot of people, just like I had staff members who were very much against me, and I think kind of like made high school very difficult for me. I also had a group of teachers that were very supportive and gave me a safe space to be able to work through my emotions and everything that I was dealing with in high school. And so when I say it's formative and it's building, it's literally because I'm like, the amount of pressure that I went through then yeah. prepared me for any troll that I'll face in the internet now. Like I genuinely mm. believe that I'm born to be a star just yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the hate that I experienced in my childhood and how that has developed thick skin for me to be able to navigate the entertainment industry now. But then now speaking about like you being 
bullied, yeah? Like, how did that play a role in terms of, um, you know, like, those comments that were being made to you? Like, did they land? Did they cause, like, a whole, like, um, issue for you in terms of how you, your, your self-image and all of that? Like, how did you get through all of that as well? Yeah, I think it definitely does take a toll on your self-image and how you see yourself because if a group of people constantly say the same thing over and over and over about you, yeah. at some point you're going to start questioning, looking in the mirror like, am I really what they say I am? And when I said at the beginning of the podcast that one of my biggest lessons was the fact that not everybody is your friend, there was a teacher, um, her name was Ms. Khrobla in my high school, and she pulled me aside one day and she was like, you can't let the people see you cry. Like you can't let them mm. see you be affected by the things that they're doing and the things that they're saying because that's exactly what they want. They sure. want to break you and they want to see you at the complete bottom. So if you ever need a shoulder to cry on, come to my office. And I think, not my office, my classroom. And I think in spaces like that, I really am grateful for having people who are able to be like a safe space. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. That's it is a lot. lot. It is a lot. But having that safe space and having people who can speak into your life and remind you that that's what they're saying, but it's because they're jealous or upset about this and that and that, but this is who you actually are. Remember who you are. Keep your chin up. Was that, I want to ask if like that safe space was always there for you? Because I know for me, um, when I went through my stuff and I wouldn't say it was like outright bullying, mm. right? But you know, certain chats always said. And then for me, like that process is, and you're not even hearing for me, like it wasn't the thing like you heard people saying, hey, dude, this is who you really are. Actually, boy, you're a, you're a fine looking gentleman. You know, like you're not hearing those chats. So it's only like after you go through like a mawaza, then, you know, the shift happens, you know? So was it for you like a thing where like that support was always there to be like, when you're going through this, I could go to Mrs. Mang Mang, I could go to Mamzo, and I could get that like rejuvenation of who I am and mm. that idea of what actually the goal is and my actual self-image. Yeah, I, it's actually crazy. I think in every, every single grade and every single season of my life, I can definitely remember there being like a group of three teachers or like three friends, people, normal people, who gave me a safe... Even the cleaners at school. <laughs> I remember they used to allow me to go sit in the kitchen during break time. Yeah. Sometimes I'd go sit in the kitchen and they'd have prepared like a little... I don't know what to call it, like toast. Yeah, like yeah. little toast breads or whatever and tea. And I'd go sit with the cleaners in the kitchen and just have a good time. And they'd be like, it's fine. Like, who's yamming one? Like, you know, everything's going to be okay. And yeah, that was it. Jeez. That was it. That's interesting. Bro. Yeah. Because... <laughs> As much as, like, there were people in my life, like, I never got those chats. I mean, or maybe, yo, actually, now that I'm deeping it. <laughs> that, yo, maybe now that I'm thinking about maybe it. Maybe I just, it just never landed. Yeah. I think, because I feel like I'm also, like, very uh, individual who's in my head a lot. Yes. So it's easy to be like, you know what, nah, bro, like... Yeah. I hear you, but that's not true. I genuinely you know? don't even know how I got to that space, because for me, I'm like, I'm such a strong black independent woman like a lot of the times if something hits me i'm just like i can do it myself i'm gonna <laughs> deal with it myself so the fact that i had people who saw that need and gave me the space to cry and to faint and you know get it all out of my system is crazy i don't know how it happened because i'm not saying a word so in hindsight you think like you're just privileged to like yeah have that. yeah i really think it's genuinely just god's protection yeah, that's that, what I'm saying. It was meant to be. <laughs> no, clearly. I just know for a fact. And speaking about like meant to be, um, I want to know like growing up, what was like when you started realizing you're you're a human being in this thing called life. Um, what was the first thing you're like? I want to be that. Can I tell you? It's the same thing everybody wanted to be. I wanted to be a presenter on your TV. <laughs> And I remember, like, my earliest memories, yeah, like, yeah. sitting in front of the TV. So my sister and I used to sit on the floor and eat our, like, cereal, getting ready for school. Mm -hmm. And we would sit in front of the TV. And sometimes you'd have, like, little kids feature on your TV. Yeah. I don't know what, like, the protocol was around that. But I remember seeing that and always saying to myself, like, one day I'm going to be a presenter on TV just like that. But specifically, I wanted to be on your TV. And this was something that I only remembered two or three days ago because now I work as an influencer and there's so many different hats that I wear. Mm. And I'm currently on a social media break because I felt like I needed to shut down the noise and realign with who am who I am yeah. and who 
what I want, like the things that I want out of my life. And literally as I was sitting there digging, digging, I was like, actually, I never signed up to be an influencer. I just wanted to be a TV presenter. What's okay. going on yeah. here? So yeah, very long answer, but yeah. <laughs> a TV presenter. A TV presenter. Yeah. And then when officially, like now that you, what was like when you had career day at school, what was the first thing you're like, actually, this is what I want to do and I wanna pre- I'm going to start shaping working. my life towards that goal what was that career i think uh grade seven ish we yeah. had a career day that was the first time and that was the first time that i was actually forced to sit down and think about it but because now you are the smartest at this and the best at that there's so many external opinions that influence your decision of what you're going to become and what you want to study so for me at the time it was based on what is the hardest thing that i've heard teachers and my parents say is difficult to get into or difficult to do. That's what I want to be because yes. I'm the best at everything and I can do it. Damn. Yeah. You're so that it was. Girl. It started off as accounting. I wanted to be a CA, and then as time progressed, I wanted to be a doctor, and then from there, I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. Jeez. Yeah. And you did study, eh? I did. I did. I went three small years. Nothing serious. Nothing hectic. And how was that? Let's actually deep that chat. It, it like. was a lot. It was a lot. There's a book that I came across. It's called um, The Gifts of Imperfection by Dr. Brene Brown. Yeah. And in the very first chapter, she speaks about authenticity and how authenticity is letting go of what everyone says you're supposed to be to embrace the person that you're actually, you actually are. Wow. So for me, it was peak COVID and I was now struggling with anxiety and depression and a whole lot of things because I went through three years of in high school getting 90% wasn't hard like it wasn't difficult for me I just flipped through the pages went to the right and it was great like it was fabulous so when I got to varsity I was like can you imagine if I actually took the time to like study for two weeks in advance for a test how much more damage i could do like yeah, yeah. i'm gonna be top of my class in engineering then i'm gonna be the best engineer in south africa mm. so i remember this one test i studied for two weeks and it was a math test calculus and then fine we hand in our papers two weeks later the marks come out right but they usually stack all the tests and everyone must just grab their script so yeah, my yeah. friends are like taking this talk oh, I got 25%. Oh, okay. I'm like, bro, that test was so good. Like, that was a great test. Took my script of confidence. Like, let me tell you guys how much I got. <laughs> and I opened it up and I had 5% for my test. Hectic. Crazy. That's the lowest mark I've ever got. Well, I've gotten a lot of zeros also. <laughs> so it's not my lowest mark. But yeah, yeah, that was really bad. And then I tried to apply myself a lot harder and I thought maybe it was a lack of effort on my end, which is crazy because... No, I had put in a lot of yeah. effort to that. And that's when I started developing eating disorders and a whole lot of things because I got to a place where I would say to myself, if I don't get through six chapters by six o'clock, then I'm not eating. Like I don't deserve to eat because eating is a waste of time. Mm. Bathing is a waste of time. So I also stopped bathing. Like, can you imagine, guys? Yeah. I stopped bathing. I stopped eating. I stopped sleeping because I felt like I wasn't giving enough of myself to this degree. Um and a big part of me holding on, because I remember at the end of my first semester of engineering, so this is before I even finished first year, halfway yeah. through first year, my dad sat me down and he was like, listen, David Kale was studying, I think he said accounting or law or something like that. David Kale was studying this and then he left it and now he's David Kale. <laughs> and he gave me so many different examples of people who were studying great degrees and then realized mm. it wasn't for them and then pivoted Believe and now they're doing amazing. And I was like, nah, sorry, I can't, I can't be a dropout. And I remember at that time, I think I had like 60% average for my semester, which was pretty good considering I was studying engineering. And deep down, although I knew that it wasn't a degree that I wanted and wasn't something I was passionate about or I was even meant to do, I felt connected to in any way. I pushed on because I wanted to make sure that everybody thought I was a great person. So in me... Going after the engineering degree, I was trying to control people's perceptions of me, which like didn't end well. So, <laughs> yeah. So when when did the realization come that uh, like I tried, I think we need to shift gears. When I had my first panic attack, but like I don't know if it was a panic attack or if it was a, like a psychotic episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it was 2021, and we had been given an assignment to like read a, like something chapters of a book for the lecture the next morning, which was going to be online. So I sat on the couch at my dad's house and I was trying to read this book. 
I'm trying to read and I can see the words on the laptop. Yeah, yeah. But like nothing is making sense. Like you're just seeing letters and you can't comprehend what the letters are. In my mind, I'm like, I can't read. This is weird. <laughs> but I'm probably tired because I've really been pushing to get stuff done. Yeah. Let me go to sleep and I'll try again in the morning. In the morning, I think I woke up at like six-ish. I usually start with devotion. So I opened up my Bible and I sat on my bed. I was going to do my daily devotion, read my scripture of the day, pray, that kind of thing. Yeah. And when I opened up my Bible, the same thing happened. I literally was seeing words on the page, but I couldn't, like, com- I literally couldn't read. Like, it was crazy. I couldn't read. And as I was trying to read, forcing myself, trying to figure out, like, why I can't piece the letters together to make words in my brain, I then fell into a panic attack. And then I thought I was going to die. So I whispered, like, a prayer in my brain because I couldn't speak now. And I'm, like, hey, sitting there, like, hey. I can't read. I can't speak. What's going on? So I just start whispering, like, God save me. God save me. That was literally just my prayer. God save me. God save me. God save me. God save me. And then by the end of it, I had calmed down. And if if you turn your UP student card, there's usually like um, numbers of helplines and yeah, all sorts yeah, of yeah. stuff. So I called one of those and then they referred me to a psychi- psychologist. Yeah. And then I started working through the issues. She helped me unpack a lot of the stuff that I was dealing with. And by the end of it, I came to the realization that I actually didn't want this degree. And I was doing it for the approval of people. Sure. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so what was the conversation then, like now? Um, now you're there, you're working through all of this that you're working through. You've put in all the work that you've put in, in but you're Three like, years, Baba. Listen to that. Three oh years. Goodness. Three yes. years yeah. of hard work. When my dad told me in first semester or first year that I could leave. Jeez. Yeah, it was deep. So then how, how did that conversation go then with the rentals? Like, hey, Chumi... Uh, well, obviously I knew when it comes to my parents. So there's another podcast that I listen to. I don't know if you listen to it because uh, girls. <laughs> it's called the To My Sisters podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And around that time I had discovered the podcast. And one of the things, I think it was the episode called Manifest Your Dreams, where they speak about um, having dreams and things that you want to achieve, but the work that it takes for you to get there. And I think as the episodes progressed, they started digging into this idea of like working towards your dreams and working to your dreams. And one thing that I realized was that, okay, cool. Like if I'm going to go tell my parents that I want to drop out, there needs to be a clear plan and a clear line of, you know, direction. Like, okay, when I leave this engineering degree, this is where I'm going. So I prayed about it quite a lot. I also prayed for my parents because I was like, oh God, (laughs) like I'm so scared. Can you like deal with them in advance so that when I arrive, like all is well, their hearts are rested, everything's cool. Um, And yeah, literally... I remember one day I was praying and then I usually take a walk after I pray just to like clear my thoughts and whatever. So as I was walking, then I thought I should study digital marketing at Vega. It's like, oh, that's weird. Like that's such a random thought. And what I've learned in hindsight is a lot of my random thoughts are not just random thoughts. It's like the Holy Spirit dropping little things in my like mind. So I'm like, okay, very random. And then I go back home and I open up my laptop. I start looking at the application, what they require, how much I need to pay, the fees, all that kinds of stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. And then there was a Pretoria campus and a Joburg campus and a whole lot of different things in my life that had to shift in order for me to go to the campus that I felt like, you know, I needed to be in. Because I live in Pretoria and the campus I go to is in Johannesburg. It takes me like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's actually, yeah, it's in this area. So you can kind of calculate that. Every day, every day. Every day. Every day here and every day back Back. during peak hour traffic. It's really far. Mm. So to also have to then explain to my parents why I want to go to the Johannesburg campus instead of the Pretoria one, Mm. all these different things. And I literally started with my mom because I thought it should be easier. Went to go chat to my mom and she literally was like, no. (laughs) She's like, no, good luck telling your dad. I (laughs) said, you Yo. Jesus. If, if the mommy e- says if that. If the easy person says that, she's like, just finish your degree, okay? Exactly. And then you'll come back and like look at all the no. And I was like, yeah. Damn. And then that same evening, I went to go speak to my dad. And my dad was like, I really didn't want to discourage you. I never thought you would ask. You should drop out. And I was like, wow. I literally just started 
bawling my eyes out crying. I remember my dad was sitting in the garage and I think it was probably low chilling because we were sitting in the dark, which is weird. I don't know why we were sitting in the dark. Yeah. And I was like lying on the couch in the garage and I just started crying. He's like, so why are you crying? I'm not shouting at you. What is the problem? And I'm like, well, I'm just crying. I'm just, and for me in my mind, like it was just the overwhelming feeling of the fact that, yo, God, I spent so many months praying about this. I spent so many months begging you to help me figure a way through this and to like prepare me for this conversation can you imagine being mentally prepared to fight someone yeah no and then you get there and they just say okay easy yeah bad, bro <laughs> like the, the <laughs> boss the boss like the last stage boss last number <laughs> he said okay he just said fine and literally my dad yeah, just well. goes off about how like he just and i remember i cried the whole time because he just kept saying good things and good things and better things like listen you're still young you know you're 21 you can go study whatever pursue whatever you want to pursue if it doesn't work out we'll go back to school again try oh. another degree and we'll work it all out it's not that bad Shout just out decide pops, dog man. it's wow. like just decide what you want to do Make sure that you work hard towards it mm. and then I'll support you. Whatever you need, I'll be behind you. But if it doesn't work out, we need to both be able to sit down and agree and say, this is not working. I now must go back and look for something else. Mm. So, yeah, that's, Jeez. yeah. Yo, yeah, I cried. And then I went to my room and I cried some more. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I was so shocked. Yeah. Mm. No, I would too. Damn, shout out parents. Shout out Zali's. Yeah. Gang, gang. And when the dad says yes, the mom can't see. Ah, uh, it's chai. It's chai. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's interesting because even like, um, if I'm not mistaken, you started your YouTube channel um, during you, when you were studying engineering, yeah. right? And obviously, that also just took off. Kupugat. <laughs> yeah. And with that also came a whole lot of opportunities. And then you did Miss Essay. Damn, top 30, by the way. Just putting it out there, top 30. <laughs> and, and then obviously there's still more to come. But like, obviously with the things that you've accomplished in the entertainment space in the past couple of years, like, what does that mean to you? Was it something you're anticipating? Was there a goal for that? Tell me more. I think with a lot of the stuff that I had achieved or I guess gotten to tick off my list was definitely things that I anticipated. So, I mean, not anticipated like I knew it was mine to have, but like anticipated as in this is what I wanted. So there's no need for me to be shocked that it's happening because it's what I was working towards. So, for example, with the Miss South Africa thing, I remember I started working towards my Miss South Africa entry the year before that. So yeah. 2023, I entered and I started working around June of 2022. Um, so fixing my Instagram so that my feed, by the time that I post my audition video, someone can go back to my feed and be like, if they want to look up, who's this person? You know, their video is interesting. When they look at my feed, the feed screams, I should be your Miss South Africa. <laughs> you know, and, and I think that also was because there were certain things that I had to prepare to be able to do. I mean, it's a no-brainer. If you want to be Miss South Africa, you're going to have to take a lot of photos. Yeah. Like, you must pose in the bikini, pose in the dress, pose in, in the car, pose in pose in so many different things and areas and you need to be able to sell whatever it is that the brand is being sponsored by so sure. if they're being sponsored by nike i need to know how to pose in a nike shoe right yeah um so a lot of the whole like fixing my social media was also me trying to get comfortable in front of the camera posing full body learning that skill so by the time i enter and i do get accepted to Miss south africa i'm not unprepared and now all of a sudden trying to learn the skill of posing in front of the camera I just do it because i've practiced um, and I think it's like that with a lot of the goals that I have, that by the time I get it, there's no like shock of like, oh, gasp, I never thought I'd be here. I mean, yes, there's an element of like, I never thought I'd be here, but it's more like, well, this is what I've been working towards and this is the result of the work. That so it's I've calculated. Been in. So it's calculated. Everything in life is calculated. Whether you yeah, like to think of it or not. That? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Man, I really it, think man. so. Everything in life is calculated. If you look even... Sorry, guys. I'm a Christian. So, like, it's, it just be like that. Like, <laughs> I'm always just going to pull this stuff out. Yeah. But it's like, there's certain principles that God sets in place. And whether you're an unbeliever or you're a believer, if you follow that specific principle, because God has put it in place, you're going to reap the benefit of that reward. Yeah. Yeah. The ben yeah you're going to reap the reward of that... Yeah, no, yo, English. 
<laughs> right? So that's why people will say like, okay, but I'm a Christian and I'm doing all these good things, but why are these things not happening to me? And look at the unbelievers. They're the ones prospering. But it's because they understand the principle of sowing seed and mm. then reaping in the right time. If you're a farmer and you put a seed in the ground, you expect to come back a year later and find a mango tree, right? Thanks. Because you planted a mango seed. So I think the biggest issue with a lot of our dreams and our vision boards and stuff that we aspire to have yeah. is not to say that God is not answering our prayers, but it's like you pray, you ask God for something, but then you put an apple seed in the ground and you're mad at God because mm. a banana tree didn't come up. It doesn't work like that. What you sow is what you get. So everything... If, even my relationship with my boyfriend. Yeah, of course you do, man. <laughs> I have to take it. Like, even things like that. Yeah. Like, people sometimes look at us and it's like, wow, what makes you guys work so well together? How are you guys still keeping the spark? And, you know, all these stuff. And I'm not saying that the relationship is perfect or it's always as high as everyone thinks it is on social media. But it takes, like, working through the difficult stuff, having hard conversations. I can't tell you how many difficult conversations we've had where mm. I've cried. Not because he's being mean or he's being rude but because the conversation is just difficult like i can't believe i have to say these things with my chest so yeah. i'm crying because my pride is breaking on the inside but it's the same with your dreams damn so just so if you put in the effort it, nothing should be a surprise hope somebody's taking notes <laughs> is putting out the gems are being put out right now and of course there's so much i really want to deep mm. in terms of um, what you've achieved but i want to park it one because of time Yes. But yeah. <laughs> I talk too much. But I think it's also because I think there's still so much we're still going to see from you. Hopefully. And I feel like the person you are in the next couple of years is not going to be the person you are now. True. And I want to tap into that person Yo, then. The future person. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to tap into that person then. Okay. But like even in terms of um, the past, what I want to get into now is something I call... The archives. Okay. Right? Yeah, Very scary. Yeah. Bokang. So I went digging for some like pictures. Mm, you get me? That's so scary. Some pictures. And then I just want you to describe what's going on in the picture and uh, what it means to you uh, now. Now. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, right? scary. So this is the first picture. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah. that's so funny. I need to go clean my Instagram. Yeah, after so this. what was going on here? This was probably like 2016, 2015. Yeah. Um, my biggest goal as like a teenager, or well, my dream actually, was to be a Tumblr girl. So I don't know if mm. you remember back during that time, like Tumblr girls were everything. Like they had the aesthetic, they were cool girls. And a lot of the Tumblr girl aesthetic involved like hiding your face when you post. So it would be something like this, yeah, or like yeah. you'd put something cool over your face. And that's literally what I was doing. I was trying to achieve the Tumblr girl aesthetic. Wow. So that's your presenter, guys. Guys, <laughs> I'm a model now. <laughs> no, but real I, get, I yeah, get paid. Yeah. I get paid to model now. I had to start there. Started somewhere. Yeah? I started there. Yeah, you know, but shame. The the model chats, you're cooking, bro. Yeah, I was looking at your you. IG and the, the work you've been putting in that you said since 2022 before last year's Miss Essay's thing. I was like, Bax? Yeah. What's going on, bro? Yeah. Because like, it's, it's a job. Like Nibia, everything that on? you want is a, is a job and yeah. you have to work for that job get the skills. I could even be a doctor. Ah, out. You get the degree. Yeah. Exactly. It's the same But thing. I wouldn't lie. You see my favorite, um, like, I don't know what you call it, the theme that you did was, was, was it the Afro? Oh, was it the Afro, the Afro hair. <gasps> I said, oh. <laughs> I can't yeah. tell you how many people were so sad when I did the also, pixie cut. Also, the yeah, 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 yeah they I were like, they were like the oh cut no, as well. Oh no, the pixie cut. But it's always Bro, like that. Like crazy. whenever I do a new hairstyle, people are like, "I'm so sad that you lost the old one, but the new one." <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Now that's when you know you're killing it. Yeah. So the next picture, ah, uh, uh, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So this was like peak lockdown. Well, not peak lockdown, but this was around the time that I just started my YouTube channel. Mm. And my brother was a very big part of my YouTube channel. So we did a lot of challenges together. And I don't know if you remember during lockdown, you couldn't go get your hair done or anything like that. So this was after the video we had taken together where I gave my brother the best haircut he's ever had in his life. I don't know about that. In my opinion. Watch that Look video. at him. Shame. Look at him. Now your brother. Oh, and the video, guys, if you go watch that video, it's so bad. Like, the sound is bad. Everything in that video is just terrible. It's bad. Said every successful influencer. 
No, 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 but it's really bad. Like, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's actually very fair. bad. I mean, I think from a quality perspective, it's not the best. Yo, it's, but it is the worst. Wise, yes. Yeah. Finger licking good. If you know, you know. <laughs> now I'm saying. The next one. Woo! That is so scary. Yeah, you know, yeah. every time I see this picture, because if you Google my name on Google Images, this picture is bound the fact to that show you know. Up. So I Google. Yeah, I had to. You have to Google yourself. Guys, if you don't Google yourself, like... Yeah, I can't lie. I do it like two I, times a day. Yeah, you need to. You need to make sure sorry that there sorry. are good things <laughs> under, under your name and see what people are saying about you and is that something that you want to be at the forefront. Right. So I had to work very hard to get rid of, like, every time you type my name in Google, it just say robotics. And then <laughs> it'd be like, world record! La, 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 like, all these great things, which I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to do. Yeah. But that's not who I am anymore. So, yeah. This was your robotics team. This was the very first robotics team that I was a part of. It was the South African robotics team. And I was the only girl on the team and the only yeah. black female Damn. on that team. And how was that journey? Because... It was insane. So during this time, I was learning how to code. I had never coded before because we didn't have that in my school. I think we probably had IT, but like, I'm just a girl. What was I doing <laughs> taking IT? I didn't take IT. Um, so I taught myself how to code. I was also the team spokesperson. It was very funny. We had to vote who's going to be captain, who's going to be this. And everyone was like, Barbara should definitely be the spokesperson. So this yeah. was where I got a lot of my training in terms of how to deal with media and interact with news outlets and all this kinds of stuff. Just like I'm saying. My whole life was preparation, yeah, yeah. bro. It was preparation. So, yeah, that's where I learned a lot of my on-camera skills. From. But even with this, you guys, you went to America for this. Didn't yes. You well? So our first competition was in Washington, but we went through Amsterdam. So we got to visit the Netherlands and then go to um, Washington. And then the second year, the year after that, we competed again internationally. And this time we broke the world rec record at Mexico. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, broke the world record Didn't and got featured that? and got featured on Forbes Africa. Period. Yeah, yeah. yeah At yeah. seventeen, can you imagine, guys? That's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, every time I think back to my, show, I'm like, if I was one of those teachers that hated me, I would also hate me. Bro, I'd have I'd have Masoni, dude. <laughs> I'd also hate me. Yeah, no, hate makes key. sense. Jeez, dude, you've accomplished a lot, bro. Yeah. And I feel like there's so much, but I think the to understand the person you are now. And the person you're going to be, that's still a mystery. Mm. But I just wanted to dig a bit back in the past to be like, why it's I think, like what happened with Bax? Why is she the person she is today? And I think, at least for me, I was able to get a lot from that. And I want to thank you. I hope you did. You know? You know thank you, you know? for having me. Uh, but we're not done oh. yet. <laughs> Girl, relax. You said I'm not cool. releasing you yet. No, no, no. I'm nah, enjoying nah. the lights in this room. It's just it's giving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the studios come through, do the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so thank you so much for coming through and sharing and being open and vulnerable. You're a better person than me. You just came out here. I was bullied. I was, I was. Yeah, I mean, bullied yeah. is a strong word. Maybe victimized is better. Yeah, but is it better? No, nah, uh, I think that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's worse. But shout out, shout out for being vulnerable and trusting and making it a safe, well, allowing it to be a safe space for you to communicate that. And I just hope really somebody out there, a young black girl, is like, yeah, I, I want to be like Barbara someday. Period. You know? Don't be like me, though. Be like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even a young black brood, I'm sure my little cousins are going to watch and be like, yeah, I want a wife like bikes. Got you, boys. All the best. <laughs> Shout out to KB. <laughs> Shout out to KB for <laughs> real, man. Uh, so now what we're going to do now, it's um, a part of the the pod uh, where I like to do confessions, confession corner. Okay. Simple, I'm going to read out a confession. Oh, great. I thought I was going to have to confess. And I'm like, then, oh, oh, I don't have confessions. No, no, no. Not today, anyway. <laughs> we'll try again in five years. <laughs> That's hilarious. So the first confession goes as follows. Somebody here says, I feel like I lost my social skills after the pandemic. Mm. Where do people go to socialize and make new friends? Real, real. That's I, heavy. I'm probably the worst person to ask because my answer would be church. <laughs> it's not a bad answer though. Yeah. Yeah. I think That's wherever, tough. wherever you, I th the same applies for people who are looking for romantic relationships. Mm. Wherever people who share the same values as you would be, it's probably where you should hang out more. Wow, I never deeped it like that. Yeah. That's crazy. So that's where you found KB? 
Well, he lives next door my house. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> We've known each other for time. Yeah, yeah. Damn, tell yeah. Him I'm Our moms of his were neighbors. So, I you guess. must tell him I'm jealous of his beard. Really? Damn. Everyone's jealous of his beard. Because of his tags. Actually, he's just a good looking brother. He is. That's the truth, guys. I'm so sorry once again. <laughs> <laughs> KB. <laughs> nah, anyways, the next one goes I was cycling at the gym today, and a cute girl came onto. The one next to me. Mm. She smelled really nice. And despite me dying, yeah, yeah dying, I stayed on just for that. It made me rel- realize that I've been so starved of affection that just the scent of a Hi, woman Hi, is bo. enough to make me Hi, feel bo. something. Hi, bo. Hectic. Yo. That's, that's bigger than Yo, me. I, I know. That's. I just say hello, bro. Oh, you know what? Yo. Facts. Off Tell screen, us. I'll show you. I'm nah. screaming. Yeah, I can't. I can't, I, the tea is I can't do it on like, on camera, on socials, on big YouTube. No way. It's on big Spotify. Say no. Are you scared of the internet? Oh, hi. I feel like I need to get more fear of the key. internet. I just be Personally. saying stuff. No, no, no. So I was looking through my my DMs, and I shot my shot. Mm. And I think you know this this girl I'm talking about. I'm like, bro, she's probably way out of my league. And I was like, bro. You literally ask this girl on a date. That's crazy business. Who's that? Oh, oh, oh after no, school. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but I was just like, bro, what? Like, you had some big kahunas to do that. I feel like that's what you should do, though. Like, I, nah, believe, in, I believe in boys saying things with their chest. Personally, I agree. I, I don't... Yeah, no. I'm not going to try and figure out how you feel about me. Like, if you feel something, you have to say it with your chest. Like, KB, I think... For a good while, we were friends just because he had guababa and I could tell he had guababa. But I'm oh. not going to do the work for you. Damn. You have to work. So real. But me, I'm going to tell you, dog. Hey, show me. Let's go. Coffee. Yeah. Ice cream. Bowling. As, okay. you, as you should. Anyways, the next confession is, I feel like I lost my... S- oh, no. I read that wrong. <laughs> it's, this is the last one. It says, just finished my trick and got a job. The only problem nice. is my hours are so long, I don't have any time to draw. It's been a month now, and I'm losing my effing mind. Yo, that is very deep. That's tough. Um, but what I will tell you is that I think it's worse, and this is coming just from a Christian perspective. Yeah. For me, I'm like, I if I was in that position, fresh out of matric and I just got a job... It's worse to find the love of your life at that point and have no money to act on the finding of the love of your, your life, life yeah. than to be single. I hear that. Yes. Like, I'd rather be single than have the love of your life in front of you, but you don't have the money, money to proceed. <laughs> now what? You guys can't such li- a, that's such you can under- live estimate. together. Yeah, no. Money is such an underestimated, is that the word? Under. Yes. Carry on, maybe we'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not put there. Like, it's a... Se- it's underrated. Yes! yes. So, what? thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's underrated. Mm. Very underrated. Like, mm. in a relationship today, you need money. You do need money, guys. Fact. You need money. And you don't need money, but you need it. You need money, yeah. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? Like, it's not necessary, but... but. You it has it. to be there. Yeah, no, high key. But I don't know. Straight after my trick, I got a job. I th- for me, I think it's character building. Because then now you're going to know, like, is this really what I want to do? Do I still want to study? Because mm. I feel like also 18, all my mates are probably first year. Most of them anyway. First year, not really focusing on anything, anything. Mm. So when are you seeing your mates? They're partying, they're grooving. When oh, are you they meet deadlines? They meet John, John like... Partying. Yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. Jola, like Jola. No, not Jola. Oh, oh I thought they meant Jola. Like, why are you so stressed? Because I couldn't know Jola. Oh, Ajo. No way. Oh, my days. Yeah, oh, you mean Jola, like Monate? Yeah, like Monate, Monate. Oh, yo, man. I think that there's a time for everything. And in one season, you might have no job, but just keep oh there's actually something that i said on my podcast like a few weeks ago yeah, i'm yeah. gonna try and like pull it out right now so i can sound smart and wise but you know that quote that says um the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the yeah, second yeah. best time it's is now, now. Yeah, i yeah. think when you look at the future that you want 
you need to ask yourself if the seeds you're sowing today are sowing towards that future or mm. not towards that future. So if for this year or for the next three, four, five years, God forbid for your sake, you can't draw. You need to ask yourself if the job that you're doing and the career that you're building is aligned with where you want to see mm. yourself in the next five years. And if it is, then tell yourself every day that you're planting seeds that will bear fruit, that you're going to be grateful you did five years ago yeah. because if you look at all the people that are joling and partying right now not to say there's anything wrong with it because you definitely need to have that fun yeah um you need to ask yourself if the seeds that they are sowing are things that you want to reap five years from now because the That's the so fruit real. of joel is what Monad, it's just temporary dog Monad, the tomorrow your car gets a scratch now you're sad the monad <laughs> from yesterday is, it's finished it's finished it's fixed, right it's but fixed. if you're working nobody can take away the work experience on your cv nobody can take away the degrees and short courses and things that you've done to upscale yourself they never go away but monate, monate wa fe, la, mo yeah. long and outside so real <laughs> so real yeah yeah man i don't know i think it could be worse I, I it think could be worse i don't think it's a bad thing um i, th- I say just take what you can from there and mm. if give it the year if really it's not a, not what you want then you can be course. unemployed and still not be able to troll. Facts. Yo, because that's you, the don't, worst. you don't have money. You don't have the money. You have the time, but you don't have the money. So stack your money up so by the time you get to Joel, you Joel hard. <laughs> you Joel Sparkle. That's so funny. Not that I would know, though. Oh. Side eye. <laughs> You're men of God, guys. <laughs> yeah. Scary. Me. Mm. He said, mm. Mm. And anyways, we're going to chop. Um, actually, we we'll actually have to end off the chat mm. in a bit now. But we still have one more segment. Mm. And something I'm really introducing because we're celeb, like I said. Oh, okay. Right? But as fate would have it, I forgot the actual book. Wow, yeah. Bokang. So this you're gonna, is great. So, but it's fine. <laughs> you know? yeah, we're going to use this book okay. right, that I have here with me. And basically, what that book is for is it's for a question for the previous guest. Wait, no, it's for you're going to write a question in here mm-hmm. for the next guest, not knowing who the guest is. Is. is okay yes. but also i have a question from my previous guest of not course. a celeb but because to start it off i needed a question because we're all stars Atala, yeah. are resistible mm. okay. but, uh, some are stars on the streets but also like we're all stars, oh, okay. so shout out to my boy lionel who was on the pod so he oh, gave is he the guy with the beard yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Love a deep voice nyana I just yeah. remember you guys were busy saying, I was like, Who? whatever these boys are talking about sounds very emotionally serious. I don't want to be there. Nah, whatever. What, what are you doing there? Like those snippets sounded so deep. Yeah, exactly. I want you to feel something so you can watch the full episode. Yo, so I, 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 I pick selective. Powerful el- elements. Sometimes I, don't, I pick something that sounds mawaza. But because you don't have context. It's giving clickbait. High key. Can't even lie. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> so my brew Lionel sent two questions. Okay. So I'm allow it because I think they're important questions and I want you to answer both of them. Yo. And then once we're done, you're gonna sign you're gonna put your question for the next guest in this book. Then we'll cut it out and paste it in there. In book. Book. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the question. He says, um, given your experience mm-hmm. with the concept of love from past relationships. Has the definition ever changed for you over time? If so, would like to hear the description in your own terms. You. Oh, that's heavy. My boy's deep. Uh, Lionel, shout out, bro. Like you could. Deep. I'm going <laughs> to ask a fun question just for the vibes. Um, yo, what have my previous relationships taught me mm. about the definition of love? Let's start there. Yo, and have they changed over time? I have to really think. That's so hard. I've only been in like three relationships. This is my third one. Okay. Um, I think maybe not directly about love, but about relationships in general. Yeah. And that is that the person that I believe I am worth having. Yeah. It's the English making sense. Like it's it's the fact that the person that I think is my ideal partner is not a standard that's too high for me. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Like yeah. there's no such thing as an unrealistic standard. And I think 
in every interaction, whether it was just a first date that was then unsuccessful or like first, second, third date that just ended up unresolved, what I came to realize is that good men are not scars and they definitely are in abundance. So there's no need for me to settle for a love that I don't feel like serves me and where I'm at because I'm scared that I'll never find anyone better. Actually, that's probably what I learned. Because I remember with my very first boyfriend, my biggest fear was that I will never find someone who is as caring or as emotionally available as he is. And then I went on to find that actually, my Ningi, there's so many more of them. So there's no need for you to settle. Yeah, wow. out of fear that you won't find better or the same. Because there's more. So what, what clicked actually in that? What you? clicked? Yeah, to you to, to think like that now. Uh, I think it's an idea of self-worth. Like when the way that you view yourself changes, then the world around you changes. So it's all about perspective at the end of the day. And I, mm. I, if you go down on my Instagram, just to give you a clear picture, you can see that my glow up started in 2021 after my 21st birthday, which was low-key after I broke up with the person that I was with um, at the time. And it has nothing to do with him or like the relationship that we were in. But I think taking that time to be by myself and spend time with myself and evaluate that relationship, what went right, what went wrong, I got to then realize that actually the idea that I have of myself was much less than who I actually am. Oh. And I think a lot of the times I was trying to shape shift to be the ideal partner for the other person, but not necessarily questioning if I felt my needs were being met in that relationship. So 2021, around October-ish, that's when I got the brown wig and then I started dabbling into my hot girl era. I was yeah. like looking from Jolo and ever since then I've just been... The Kukuga. beauty has been increasing, <laughs> increasing, increasing, increasing. So, yeah, it's definitely the way that I viewed myself that changed everything. James, man, pure James. Yeah. Last question. Yeah, he says, if you had to believe in something outside of religion... What would it be? I literally was about to say God. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be and how convinced are you in your respective beliefs towards the said thing? Yo, that question has a lot of English in it. Bro, this man... If I weird. had to believe in something outside of religion, mm. what, would I, what would it be? I'm trying to say not my boyfriend because I definitely would believe I'm in so him. Like, God. I believe in him. <laughs> There's nobody I believe in like him. Um, but if I had to believe in something, repeat the question, please. Oh, okay, it says, if you had to believe in something outside of religion, what would it be? And how convinced are you in your respective beliefs towards the said thing? It would be myself. Mm, I would have okay. to believe in myself. Because I think nobody is gonna go after my dreams for me and nobody's going to invest in my dreams for me other than myself. So if I don't believe in myself, if I don't believe in the gifts that God has given me, if I don't believe in my ideas and my capacity to do things, then I fail myself. And if I fail myself, am I living? <laughs> it's not yeah. a life to live. So I definitely think it, it would be myself. I would have to believe in myself. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Shout out Lino for these questions, bro. Damn, I think you should do my prep for my show, actually. I'm first. screaming. <laughs> if, you're, if you are looking for a content producer job, call me. Call me. High key, you high key, because this is me. clean. How would you answer that question? Which one? The last one. Yo. If you could believe in anything. I was actually sitting here saying, I'm glad I wasn't being like that. I'm asking you. Yo, what would I believe in? Mm, 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 mm. You're putting me on the spot, yeah? <laughs> you put me yeah. on the spot. <laughs> Hi, Bo. Yo, dude, that's a tough one. Um, honestly, I don't think I'd believe in anything. Yo. Um, because <gasps> outside of religion. He's crying, guys. Yeah, no, it's tough. Because I think, out, yo, I don't know how to explain it, but religion um, has played such a huge role in my life mm. and in quote-unquote, understanding who I am. Mm. So when I tell people, like, if, if you take away my, my Christianity, my relationship with God away from me, like, I literally me mean like I'm nothing. Because mm. the, the basis of really who I am and who I understand myself to be 
lies in my relationship with God. So if you take that away, it's crazy. So now if you say, okay, other than Christianity, what would you believe in? I'd maybe pull out, you know, another religion, right? So now if you're saying outside of religion as a whole, mm. you've lost me. That's crazy because, you know, when you ask that question, I didn't even think of it like that. I didn't think it was like, other than God, who would I believe in? I thought mm. it was like, don't say God, but like, like as in God is already... Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's like, okay, ingrained. we know you believe in God. We know you would believe in God. Outside of God, what's the second most important thing to believe in? Oh, in that perspective. Yeah. That's why I said myself. Because I'm like, hey, after God, believe in yourself. Sure. I still have a lot to do to say myself. A lot of work to do to still say myself. But I say myself. You have to say yourself. You have to trust yourself. The fact that you're able to put money down and book a studio to do work like this means that you believe in yourself. Fair, fair. Or oh, I just don't want to be broke. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking, but hi, Ki, I hear that. I hear yeah. that. I think, I think it, the, the right answer. Yeah, There's no right answer. Not, uh, there's no right answer. <laughs> but like, the answer that does resonate is, is that one. It would have to be myself. Because if you don't believe in you, who's going to believe in you? And that's so real. Yeah. Your mom. You boo. did say it, perspective. Yes. When you change everything around, you change. Everything around you changes. Hmm. How many times does the pastor say that? <laughs> so real, though. Yeah. So real? Damn. Yeah. Shout out Lionel, again. Like, I'm, my nigga, my nigga. My nigga, my nigga. Anyways, uh, before I get carried away, Bex, thanks again for pulling up. Thank you for having me. Um, appreciate you. James were dropped. Um, you put me on the spot, although it was not your job to, but it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, bro, I just wish you all the best with everything you. that you have. On high key, I really hope we work together. We on, probably will. On something. That's the tea. Um, so brands do your thing. Do what you know best to do. Um, production companies do what you know best for our numbers, emails in the description. Just putting it not out Not my there. number, though. Yeah, I'll be safe. Uh, her email, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's do the right thing. And I just can't wait for that to happen. I'm manifesting it. I'm speaking it into existence. Fire in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is Fire ours. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> that is it's ours. And in closing, um, I just want you to, in this, not the right book, mm-hmm. write the question that you have for our next guest. Hmm... Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let me write it here because this one looks like it will be hard to pull out. The question for the next person. Not knowing who they're going to be. I think you might kick yourself the day you find out. Like, oh, it was. Because you're not going to know. Oh. I should have asked them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is like definitely on the spot. I'm trying to figure out. Why would I ask someone? Mm. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in into this yes. episode with my celebrity guest and Chomi Babrax. The celebrity guest is Max scary. <laughs> <laughs> and I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Yes. Please comment down below what you enjoyed about this episode. And we'll see you in the next one. It's been lovely. It's been good. Until next time. Thank you. It's thank you. It's you.